Station, 1370 WOCA. All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. Did you know that the Marion Theater in Ocala is the first theater that had air conditioning way back when it first opened up? Oh, that's pretty cool. Can you, can you imagine going to a movie theater that has no air conditioning? I just can't. They, everybody says the good old days. I don't know. These are the good old days right now. If you, if you look at the newer cars, aren't they so cool? They're neat. Uh, I, you look at the old cars. Okay, you got a little bit of, um, you know, this. Oh, guys, you remember when you made out in the backseat? That's what everybody always says. <laughs> I never made out in the back. Did you ever make out in the backseat? Uh, sort of. Why were you in the back seat? Wasn't well, the front seat big enough? Yeah, but his car had the seats that went down, you see, from the front seat to the back. He had one of those old 1950s vehicles in the And you got into the back? Just, well, no, the seats in the front just kind of went backwards into the back seat, so you didn't have to move at all. Just so. <laughs> I've known you for so long, I've never known this, mu- this information. Well, you must have made out in the front seat then, if you didn't go in the back seat. I think so. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Have you seen the new cars? Let's get to the topic at hand. Brian Moody is on the phone. He's an automotive journalist. He's going to write a story about your backseat, Robin. Okay. Uh, he's the executive editor of autotrader.com. He's going to tell us how to find the perfect ride and the 12 must-drive vehicles of 2017. Good morning, Brian. Hey, good morning. Thanks. I think every parent is now just having, they're in shock. Oh, I can't take it. I just can't be a parent in this day and age. Where are you, Brian? Where are you calling from? Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. How's that bridge going? That's horrible, that story about the bridge. Uh, Not well. (laughs) Yeah. Not not well at all. There isn't one. Do you have to use it? Did that cause you to have a problem? No, actually, it made my commute a lot easier because the way that everyone has to go to get to that one thing, they no longer go my way. So I'm like, hey, let's do this more often. I like this. <laughs> oh, no. Don't say that too loud. They might think that you did it. <laughs> did, but, okay, well, it makes my, it's, it's sort of like when you have spring break or, say, New Year's Day. If you have to work on one of those days, you're like, this is actually kind of nice. <laughs> I don't want you to stay home more often. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um what is in the new vehicles? I guess we should get to the topic at hand, right? What is in them? I, I, I drive well, a 2005. I have no idea what's in a new vehicle. Well, that's relatively new, but here's the, here's the, the big point about all new. this is that we picked a list of must-test drive cars that we think are worth your time to go down if you're going to buy a new car. Or, but even if you're going to buy a used car, you know, a lot of ro- cars on the road today are 10 or 11 years old. That's about how long people are keeping their cars. Well, you can imagine from 10 years ago till now, things have changed. Yeah. And so, you know, using the features and finding the car that's best for you is not as simple as, you know, like you were making a joke earlier that the good old days, but, you know, it's about more than just driving the car around the block and testing out the mechanical feel of it. There's a lot of technology and a lot of interior components that you want to make sure work for you as well. Do you know, when I was a kid, there was a rumor that one day there would be self-driving cars. Now, when I'm talking about the 60s. I'm, I'm a pretty old guy. So, right. so, so in the 1960s, when I heard there was going to be self-driving cars, I said, no, I want to drive. But now that I am 60, I want a self-driving car. Are these things real? I mean, are we really going to see this anytime soon? Well, I'll tell you, there are some features in cars today that are already hinting toward that. So, for example, I'll just give you a few examples. In an inexpensive car like a Subaru or a Kia or a Chrysler or a Mazda, you can get a feature called adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control is where you set the cruise control like normal, but there's a sensor in the car that reads the speed of the car ahead of you, and it will never go faster than the car ahead of you. So if you have it set to 80, let's just say, and the car ahead of you is going 50, it will slow your car down to 50 and follow at a safe distance until that car moves, then go back up to your set speed. Even will slow some cars all the way down to a stop, say if there's an accident, yeah, yeah. and will continue to move your car along through traffic as long as you have that set Holy without you touching wow. the gas pedal or brake. Oh, my gosh. That is kind of cool. That's today. You can get that right now if you want. That is kind of awesome. scary. All right. So so that's a good feature. What what about um, the, the possibility of failure? Is it, can we talk about that real quickly? I mean, if everything is run by a computer, is it as reliable as my computer on my desk? 
Because that's not uh, good. No, they have. It's more reliable. They have redundant systems, and a lot of times we're at the point now where now this is the big leap from self-driving cars to driving assist features. Cars don't drive themselves right now. That's not possible for consumers to purchase that. It's co- possible scientifically to do it, but for the reason you're saying, there has to be a lot of risk. Now, listen, planes fly themselves. No one seems to be horrified by that, and I argue the consequences might be worse. Yeah, that's true. I never thought about that. But there is a pilot sitting there. That's true, and that'll be you in the car. You'll be <laughs> sitting there. Okay, okay. Um, what what about other other features in the car other than the driving stuff? And I know that the driving is the most important thing, but what other, what about other features like navigation? Um, the the GPS that you know we came to know a few years ago is that is it any better now than it was? It is better. A lot of people have it on their phone. And this is exactly why we tell people that when you're taking a test drive of a car, of course, drive it like you would normally on roads that are familiar to you and on the freeway, all that. But we always tell people, make sure you take a technology test drive as well. Cars have Bluetooth today. They have navigation systems. At the minimum, you should pair your phone to the car on the test drive, and you should make a call and make sure that the sound is clear enough and that the phone book and the driver controls on the steering wheel are all easy to use. Technology that isn't easy to use is not worth having. So you don't want to find that out when you're already paid for the car. It's in your garage and you realize, shoot, this is not easy. I don't know how to figure this out. Take a technology test drive sitting there in the parking lot and then take your normal test drive. Should all drivers go when you are looking for a car and take the test drive in the driver's seat? Because sometimes the seat might be comfortable for one person and not for the other. No, you should bring everybody with you. Who At some point, if you're deciding you're going to buy, you should bring everyone with you. I'll tell you, my wife and I went to go test drive a car, and she wanted to drive it too, which perfectly fair, but we went together is the point. We sat in this one car, and I was like, this is really nice. I think we ought to get one of these. And then she looks, and she goes, wait a minute. The passenger seat is not power. I don't want this car. If I'm going to be in the passenger seat at least some of the time, I want it to be just like the driver's seat, just yeah. as comfortable and be able to move back and forth with power. Yeah. So we didn't get that car. We got a different one. All right. Somebody told me one time, so this is a question for you, that the police will be able to stop your car by hacking into it. Like, there'll be a legal way to hack into your car. Like, if you're a bad guy and you just robbed the bank and they're chasing you, rather than chase you, they can just turn off your car. Is that true? Is that going to be in the car? That already happens. That can already happen. Wow. If you have a car that's equipped with OnStar and you report your car stolen and the police see it, they can call OnStar and OnStar can disable your car and have it run at less power um, to the point where you can even track it and find out where it is. So it's just a matter of time before we can get to that point. Ah, Today, wow. it's an opt-in thing. Um, I think what you're talking about is could we be forced to have that? Uh, probably not. That might, be a, that might be a privacy thing. But th- if you opt in uh, and you have a car with OnStar and a few others, you can do that. The police can do that yeah well well, i actually like that idea because i'm not going to steal a car but somebody might steal mine and Mm -hmm. and i would want them to be able to do that right so you already answered the second question which was they could locate the car yes um that's been a little for for a while there was an aftermarket product that still you can buy called lojack and that would help locate the car now they have onstar is one good example um you connect is chrysler system they might have the same thing where you can find out where the car is uh, the hard part with this is that you don't want that c- consumers to have that information necessarily. If someone stole your car, I don't know that I want to go down there and deal with it myself. I don't, you know, people don't always have the common oh, sense that's, to think. That makes Better sense. call the police. Yeah, that makes sense. Are uh, four-door sedans, like, on their way out in popularity, does it jump from, like, sports cars to the SUV? It's just SUV all day long, every day, all sales. I mean, listen, if you want a great deal on a really good car, look for a car like a Ford Fusion or an Infiniti sedan. The truth is they're, they're less expensive because the demand is lower, and there's also a much better chance that you can get a great deal on a car, a sedan, where the sales are off 12, 20, 25, 30% in some cases because people aren't buying those. If you want an SUV, well, welcome to the club. You're going to pay because when something is in demand, Demand, then there's little chance for a discount. So if you want the same thing everybody else has, great, get in line. You'll pay what the sticker price is. Uh, Brian, I, we've probably taken up your time and didn't get to the question about the must-drive vehicles. Can <laughs> you okay. can, can you name one of them? Just tell us one. I want to check one out. Uh, Lincoln Continental is an excellent luxury sedan. Uh, Audi Q7, same thing. Both luxury cars, both worth checking out. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to go check one. I'll take a test drive, Robert. Okay. Just go to one of the dealerships. Uh, Brian, do you ever want to leave us with a website? 
Yeah, if you go to autotrader.com slash must test drive, you can see all 12 of our must test drive picks, and there's a little video for each one explaining why we picked that car, and there's even uh, last year's winners, too, if you're looking for a used car. Okay, autotrader.com slash must test drive, right? Yep. Okay. Catchy, right? Uh, very good. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Very, very good. caps on. Uh, enjoy, that, uh, enjoy that downed bridge while it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. All right, we'll be right All back. Right, this is WOCA Ocala and the source. Are you in need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotional items? Then look no further and come visit the brand new Legacy Team Sales. LTS is conveniently located off 17th Street next to Armstrong Homes in beautiful Ocala. We offer the best prices and highest quality products for your company, team, school, or nonprofit. Whether looking for screen printed shirts, embroidered polos, or travel team uniforms, you'll be sure to find it at Legacy Team Sales. Come visit our new 27,000 square foot facility. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff will assist you in every part of your custom purchase. LTS carries the hottest brands in the industry like Under Armour, Russell, Mizuno, Asics, Badger Sports, Gildan, Pacific, Ogeo, and many more. At LTS, screen printing embroidery is done in-house and we guarantee customer satisfaction. Stop by, give us a call, or check us out on the web at shoplts.com. Remember the name. 